Hello and welcome to Tag One Team Talks, the blog and podcast of Tag One Consulting. We're commemorating the 20th anniversary of Drupal with an interview series featuring community leaders talking about their Drupal experiences, how Drupal has impacted their personal and professional lives, what Drupal means to them, and their thoughts on the future of the platform and community. I'm Michael Myers, the Managing Director of Tag One, and I'm joined today by James Rutherford, the Senior Manager of Strategic Partnerships at Pantheon. Welcome, James. Thank you so much for joining me today. Really appreciate it. Uh, thanks, Mike. I'm really, I'm really excited to be here. It's been um, something I've been looking forward to and uh, excited. I'm kind of looking back throughout uh, what we've done in Drupal and uh, to, to have this conversation. Definitely. You are a longtime member of the community. Uh, you got involved around 2007, which is around 14 years ago. And if memory serves me correctly, that's right about when Drupal 5 was being released. Mm -hmm. uh, you are one of the first 200,000 or so people to create an account on Drupal.org. Uh, tell me, how did you first discover Drupal? Yeah. So at the time that we first discovered Drupal, I was just a few years out of college working at uh, Georgia Public Broadcasting, which is a uh, public media company that serves the state of Georgia. And um, as a public media company, it actually serves multiple functions. There's an education function, there's a television function, a radio function, all of which uh, serve the needs of the citizens of Georgia. And they actually have a need for a robust digital presence to help communicate with um, the citizens and serve their mission. And when I was hired there, they were uh, just like a lot of organizations at the time running on a custom home-built Java JSP based CMS. I had uh, focused on Java in school and come out and had started working um, on uh, Java JSP based websites. So I was a good fit to join that team. But, um, you know, for a lot of the same reasons why uh, Drupal and the open source movement have grown, it's tremendously difficult to serve the needs of an organization that big with a homegrown CMS. So every ask from internal teams was met with like really long timelines to do development. The stack was really fragile. And we, um, right around the time that I discovered Drupal, embarked on an internal project to evaluate what the next technologies we should rebuild the site in should be. And um, as, as part of that exercise, we did many projects. I did my first Rails project. We built like a little video site in Rails. We evaluated Joomla, did a microsite in Joomla, and uh, spent a lot of time there. And, and, you know, in hindsight, that seems maybe like, hmm, why would you do that? But at the time, Joomla also had a lot of adoption, was um, considered an extensible CMS and seemed to have some, uh, some motion. And then we did, we did a mini project in Drupal 5. I felt really strongly that um, that was going to be the, the platform of choice. And we uh, rebuilt GPB's website uh, in Drupal 5. And I mean, it was really... Uh, I think a little bit of luck for us because the team was pretty inexperienced. So we were maybe not evaluating it with the level of expertise that um, would be desired. But at the same time, it was an incredible project because even at that state for Drupal 5 level, what Drupal brought to the table really empowered a small, younger team to deliver a ton of value for Georgia Public Broadcasting. Um, and we had a ton of false starts. We'll probably talk about this a little bit more, but if you look at my D.O history, um, there's a whole bunch of hilarious, like, how does this thing work? <laughs> we added this module and all of a sudden performance is struggling and I can't figure out why. Um, but what was tremendous about that is that we were able to interact with the community and very quickly solve problems. Like it's a huge value add that I think a lot of organizations um, either overlook or are so used to, they don't get the value of that. Like the empowerment for, you know, it was uh, basically a, a less experienced team to be able to meet the needs of a larger organization and do so really effectively from um, a cost and a quality of the final product. I don't know if the earliest Drupal forums are still around, but I would be grateful if they were not. <laughs> <laughs> I'd hate to look back at some of the questions I asked. Um, wow. I actually really enjoy it. I mean, it's, um, it's funny, but uh, I, occasionally I will go back and look at uh, my D.O profile and even like other forum stuff at the time because it's this amazing like timestamp of my own career progression and everybody starts, you know, everybody's new at some point. Um, and it's like my entire working record on Drupal is there uh, on D.O, which is kind of cool to look back on. Do you remember, you know, I should say, what do you remember about the project and your earliest experiences with Drupal? 
you know, I remember when I first installed it, I was like, oh my God, look at all of these SQL queries on a single page. Like this thing is going to fall over and die. Like, what am I doing? <laughs> like, why did I use this? I, um, I, I love that quote or that, that anecdote. Um, for me, it was a reconfiguring of my mindset around best practices and having to, uh, and it took me a little while. I think my team adopted it earlier than I did feeling very comfortable molding the requirements of the project to what Drupal was giving me and what the community was leading with versus um, enforcing my own idea of what I thought was best and then trying to bend Drupal to my will. And a lot of my early posts and comments are areas where like I kind of struggled with that. And when I uh, let go and started to really dive in and understand why Drupal was solving a problem the way that it did and then help you know, the, the people that I was serving um, to understand that value, that's when we, that's when, you know, my Drupal uh, proficiency took off and that's when we started to get the most value out of it. So it took a little while to like, um, and I was a little horrified by like some of the choices around uh, the way modules worked, but like after a while it clicks, you know. Do you remember what your first contribution was to the community or code? I know it was a long time ago, but, or one of the first contributions. Yeah, um, I, th I think I do. Uh, so fast forward from Georgia Public Broadcasting, I, um, I had worked there for a couple of years, did that Drupal 5 site, it was really, really successful. Um, the state of Georgia was awesome, they loved the site. So we were able to go to Drupal cons and immerse our team in Drupal. And that led to me, um, I think at Drupal con Boston, but then again in San Francisco, running into the founders of Media Current. And um, them knowing that I was from Atlanta and uh, being interested in getting me to work for them. So when I went to work for them, one of my first big projects was for a company in Atlanta called Manhattan Associates. And they had a, a fairly complex site that was trying to solve problems around translation in D6, as well as um, leveraging some aspects of domain access to create microsites and some efficiencies from the um, theming layer that we built for them, which added a ton of complexity at the time in D6. That was, that was tough. So I think my first module was uh, something called language code alias, uh, which basically tokenized uh, the, the path prefix code so that we could use it in some of the uh, workaround modules that we were developing. So very, very niche, but um, Manhattan Associates and the leadership there really bought into our vision of the fact that um, they, they were going to need this type of functionality for a long time, and it would be valuable for us to take time to put it, um, put it on D.O and support it. I want to talk more about media current in your time there, uh, but before we jump into that, there are many ways to contribute to Drupal. Code is just one of them. Uh, could you tell us, you know, what are some of your community contributions that you've made outside of the code base over the years? Yeah, um, <laughs> this we could do four hours on this. It maybe it's the most important thing to talk about on this this type of conversation. Um, I I look back at all of the time that I've spent working in the Drupal community, which has been the vast majority of my career, all the Drupal cons that I went to. And if I think of my own personal contributions, I'd like to think that, um, you know, uh, frankly, a lot of it has come through mentoring. Like once I was started down my career path and um, was really convinced of the value of Drupal and thinking about how to leverage it correctly, thinking about how to communicate to customers or new people in the community, how, to be successful in Drupal, whether that's career paths, whether that's um, thought leadership, that is um, where I think I spent most of my time making impacts. So that was like taking the time to do presentations at DrupalCon, which I don't, I'm not a public speaker. I mean, getting ready for a single presentation is hours and hours of agonizing work and I can't sleep uh, leading up to that. And I'm sure I didn't have the most memorable presentations, but every person that does that in the Drupal community does puts a lot of time and effort into educating our peers. That's extremely valuable. Um, other areas of impact would be like participating in birds of the feather sessions, helping to connect thought leaders in the space that, you know, through my own professional circle, I see them working on the same problem and saying like, hey, you know, we should be working, we should all be working on this together, even if we were different organizations. Um, and then from a more like immediate uh, contribute back aspect, the uh, team at MediaCurrent at the time that I was there and through most of the time I was there, sort of like that core group that a lot of agencies have that all grow together, had a very real emphasis on um, code con contribution. And that's not something that just happens at the individual developer level. Like I want to contribute code. 
So I'll find time in my spare time to do that. There's a lot of great people that do that and they drive our community, but not everyone has the time to do that. Or, you know, not everyone has the time to do that over time. You might do that for a couple of years, but then you have kids, your life changes, your, you know, you have constraints around your free time. And so uh, for our perspective, and there, this is still how I think Media Current operates today, but I can definitely say the time that I was there, we made a concerted effort from the first time we talked to a customer to how we manage our internal employees to try to drive time for the team to contribute back. So that's something like, you know, during the initial um, sales process and helping a, a prospect understand why they should be investing in Drupal or choosing media current to uh, leverage Drupal to solve their problems, educating them to how the open source community works, what the benefits are of contributing and really helping them understand the long-term impact on their own organization, as well as um, the, you know, the problems that they can't see in the future by, by contributing and creating a healthy community uh, from an open source perspective. And then internally, that's things like, you know, uh, marking time for the team to have during the working day to do that asking ourselves like on a given project, did we contribute back the things that are most impactful? What did we miss? Um, and then there's also some like, there's some luck and, and financial aspect to it too, as agencies move up market and they work with organizations that have larger budgets, like there's more of an opportunity to do that and they should be taking that opportunity. Media Current is one of the most well-known and uh, I think influential agencies in the, in the Drupal world. Uh, and they've consistently, you know, uh, throughout their history, been one of the top 20 agencies contributing to Drupal. Um, they were acquired by Code and Theory around 2015, uh, which was really one of the first, you know, major, you know, agency acquisitions and consolidations. Um, how much of this, you know, contribution driven methodology do you think drives the success of media current you know led to its acquisition you know the client base i mean i think it's a huge part of media current success um when you develop a culture and a mindset around um empowering the team to contribute back you attract another level of talent i think that that's very very important too and then you attract another level of expertise when um, a good uh, section of your engineering team or even you know, part of project management are contributors or thought leaders, which is just another type of contribution in the space. Um, there's a tremendous impact on uh, your business, which I think a lot of top agencies see all things being equal when uh, an organization is evaluating um, a digital agency, having that frontline expertise where you have multiple members of the team are shaping the path to the community and the project. That's a huge uh, value add, I think. Um, and our customers thought, thought so as well. And then there's some continuity there. I think, you know, if you look at long time uh, media current members like Damian McKenna, who are also massive community leaders and really care about the project, they are like expertise, their focus, their understanding of open source permeates throughout the organization. And they kind of make everyone better around them. Um, from the uh, all aspects, but especially from understanding why it's important to contribute. So I think we were really fortunate to get the right internal team and then have the leadership at Media, Media Current sort of coalesce around the idea that this was really positive and impactful. And that had like a multi-year effect for, for Media Current as an agency. Definitely. Um... I think everybody knows that I am, uh, you know, work very hard to get organizations to contribute. You know, it's, it's near and dear to my heart. And I think, you know, in everyone's mutual best interest, um, I don't want to put you on the spot here, uh, but, you know, your role at Pantheon as the manager for strategic partnerships, you have a lot of influence over agencies. You know, all of us want to work with Pantheon. Everybody wants to have a great relationship with Pantheon. So you're in a, a really unique position to influence agencies and agency behaviors. Um, you know, how would you like to see agencies contribute more to Drupal? And is there a way that, you know, you in your role and Pantheon um, as an organization can do more to influence, you know, how agencies contribute and the amount that they contribute to Drupal. Yeah, I love, <laughs> I love that question. Um, I'll start with, uh, frankly, I don't think that uh, the team, my team at Pantheon is doing a good enough job of communicating that value out to the agencies. Um, but it's definitely something that we consider to be important and it's an opportunity as the, the team in the program there grows. When you think about um, 
the role of a pantheon in a, in a partnership with an agency, our goal, our whole role is to make agencies better, to help them be more successful, to get a good understanding of what they're trying to achieve. And part of that is almost always education. Like one of the most challenging parts of running an agency or being part of an agency is that your head's down doing the work. And it's very difficult to pop your head up in the air and say, how are, how are things changing in the industry? How are things, how are my peers doing things? And if you've been successful with your way of execution, you tend to stay in that way of execution. So, I, you know, my personal belief is that there's a ton of agencies that could execute the same way a media current does and gain those benefits and just aren't doing it. Not because they don't believe in it, not because they don't have the capabilities to do it. It's because they haven't been exposed to what the benefits will be and, you know, sort of have the ability to make that real and communicate that to their own customers so that they can get the buy-in to do that. And I think, you know, Pantheon's role uh, now and, and in the future uh, and increasingly in the future is to help be um, a thought leader in that space and help educate our agencies so that they can educate their customers and get that buy-in on, on why it's valuable. Definitely. Um, one area that, I, that I, you know, that we're struggling with is always how to convince our clients in the contract stage. You know, we're going through a, one of those massive MSAs, becoming an approved vendor, sure. 40 page contract, and it is not open source friendly. <laughs> and, you know, obviously we want to work with these big enterprises and we know they can have a big impact, but it takes a tremendous amount of effort and energy up front to kind of educate them, their legal team. Um, and it's, you know, it's always a, a struggle and challenge. And I'd imagine an area where, you know, organizations could use a lot of help because it sets that, that foundation. I think it's the biggest challenge in our industry. Um, it's, it's not just a challenge from helping them understand the value of open source. It's uh, a tremendous challenge around helping organizations take the correct mindset when approaching their website. We have a legacy from um, enterprise systems from years and years and years ago where the idea of purchasing software or building an application follows a rigid structure of upfront requirements. There's a, there's a legal need to protect the, the delivery of what gets finished and define uh, the, the project ahead of time. And even as the industry has evolved, and I think for the most part we have to this idea of understanding that agile is important and that we can define an MVP, I think we still have an industry that thinks of success in terms of was the project delivered on time was the project delivered on budget and is um, not as interested in what is the impact of this project a month from now, three months from now, a year from now. And that's a combination of, it's really hard to measure that impact sometimes. Uh, it can be scary to measure that impact sometimes. You spend uh, a significant amount of money rebuilding your website or replatforming and no one wants to look and see if engagement is up or down. Or if they do, you kind of want to massage the numbers because you might not be getting the story that you want. And that, that aligns really closely with the why uh, behind uh, open source, right? Like if you're looking at your investment in digital as a single project that then you go away from and it just sort of runs away, then you're not thinking about total cost of ownership. You're not taking a long view of the, uh, your organization's objectives. And when you start to change that story, when you start to look at like the platform that I'm building as an investment for the next four or five years, not six months, not this time that I'm here, then you start to look at um, things like contributing back the code that we're doing, letting the community embrace it, iterate on it, improve it as a tremendously valuable investment, right? Um, I think like just crazy, the free expertise that you're getting, looking at your code, iterating on it, contributing back like probably key aspects of your own internal stack. Um, so for organizations that can take that long view, which are rare, I think they get it um, and it's easier to communicate. And then maybe more tactically for, Organizations that don't get that, I think um, my experience has always been that as, a, as an agency, as a consultative partner, we have to be okay with meeting them on their terms for the initial project, even if we don't desire it, but then like be working from day one to help them understand the why of the way that we work and have our most successful projects so that you can really knock that first one out of the park and gain the trust from that organization that the next thing that we do, the next phase for us is going to consider things like contributions from open source or take that longer view where we're um, you know, comfortable understanding that it's just as important to understand if the website is, is impacting the business or the organization in three months and six months and nine months. Um, when you get uh, teams and organizations to adopt that mindset, 
then the, the open source contribution aspect of it is a, is a natural component of it. I think it's a really important point, you know, gaining the trust, building success for your clients, and then having an opportunity to help them be more successful. And I'd love to see more organizations focus on, you know, long-term success and, and total cost of ownership, as, as you put it, and, and, and not just on the upfront build costs, because their success is really dependent upon making that shift. Um, speaking of shifts, uh, I want to I want to change gears a minute here. Um, what's been the best part about being part of the Drupal community for you? Oh, <laughs> um, there's so many like ways to answer that question. I'll tell you through a couple of like maybe stories. I, I can't see the Drupal logo without uh, thinking of my kids playing with Drupal drops that I would bring back from DrupalCon. My, my uh, children know what a Drupal drop is. It's like they have a couple of Drupal plushies that are part of their, um, you know, you know, things that they've kept since childhood. And um, <laughs> they confidently say that daddy does Drupal. It's like, it's, it's pretty amazing to uh, think of the technology and a community that you're part of within the context of your family. But that's absolutely um, what's happened to me. And then outside of my own personal family, uh, my professional career, I would not be where I am today. I would not um, have got to work with the great people and amazing teams that I've gotten to work on without Drupal. And I think it's because the Drupal, the, the concept of open source um, as a project, and, and Drupal is a, you know, obviously an open source project, attracts a certain type of person that's collaborative, um, that is here to do great work, um, but you know, also is the type of person that you make connections with that lasts a really long time. I still talk to a uh, team that I worked with at Georgia Public Broadcasting. I'm still close with the team that I worked with at Media Current. I have um, uh, amazing colleagues at Pantheon that get that same vision. So there's like a, a mindset that makes it so that your involvement in Drupal, I think, becomes a bigger part of your life than it's my job. Um, and then also at the same time, it's a very comfortable thing. You don't, it's not a club where I have to, you know, be measured by how many commits I have, right? If it was, you wouldn't be... <laughs> You wouldn't be having me on this podcast for my, um, you know, two sandboxes and an abandoned project. Um, and so, uh, sorry, if it's about impact, I mean, it, it's impacted literally every facet of my life. Um, maybe another important part of it is professional career growth. Like the, the Drupal community is such an amazing place for people to come and learn and get better in every single way. Every DrupalCon, every camp, is your peers helping you understand what to focus on, what matters in the industry, what the impact can be, and then coming in. You know, I've, I've never ever seen a um, interaction in the Drupal community. I'm, I'm not sure, like with thousands of us, it happens occasionally, but from my own personal experience, where someone can be brand new um, and they get guidance and direction. What are the next steps? How to focus? What to think about if they want to make a career here? Or someone could have been in the community for ten years. And we're just sharing anecdotes or even, you know, the latest thing that we're focusing on. So it's a pretty, pretty impactful um, mindset that I think the community has and something that I'm really uh, grateful that I got to be and continue to be part of. The pervasive, you know, influence and impact of Drupal on our lives, personal and professional, always amazes me. Um, I remember, you know, vividly those Drupal drops and the digital echidna, you know, those echidna plushies, yeah, like so many things that I brought back for, for my nieces and whatnot. Um, do you have, you know, uh, another, you know, favorite Drupal memory or experience that stands out in your mind? Yeah. Um, I have a ton of them, um, but just because of my own personal career and, and the time and effort that went into the project. I think for me, like the highlight of my Drupal experience is probably um, launch day for the weather.com project that Media Current did with Acquia and with um, the amazing, amazing team at Weather. That was a, I think a nine month project, um, a really at the time advanced, uh, partially decoupled architecture with Drupal 7, multiple teams. I was embedded at Weather working alongside those folks for months. And it was um, just one of those amazing projects where it's like high stakes, high stress, but everyone pulls together. You know, everyone's rowing in the same direction. We just had, we had brilliant people working on there. At the time, um, a guy named Jason Smith, who's 
I was a solutions architect at Media Current, now works for Red Hat, just incredibly brilliant guy. Um, the weather.com team was uh, also just full of brilliant engineers and people leaders. And um, we were all sort of in the like uh, mission command room when uh, we turned the dial and all of the traffic started to hit weather. And that's a like a, you know, sort of make or break moment. It's really hard to simulate that level of traffic with the, the complexity of the system. And, uh, you know, the launch went really well. It's the first time in the history of weather, weather.com that they tried a new CMS and it didn't fall over on the first try. That's a great feeling. You know, you love um, you love those projects where it's a big win. But more importantly, like to me, uh, it became like lifelong friendships, uh, again, associated with Drupal. I still talk to uh, a lot of that team at Weather, even though they're on to different things and different projects and maybe even different technologies. So, yeah, that was a big one. That was a standout moment in the history of Drupal, I think. I mean, uh, I think weather, so too. yeah, I think it was a first top 10 website, maybe only top 10 website to, to, to use Drupal. There are a couple top 100s, but uh, that was by far in a way, you know, the, you know, one of the biggest public launches ever, if not the biggest uh, and a marquee, you know, for, for Drupal. So yeah. Um, we talked a lot about, you know, positive impacts and, and, and your favorite things about Drupal. Uh, I'm curious, you know, we'll get a little controversial here. Maybe what is your least favorite aspect of Drupal or the Drupal community? Ooh, least favorite aspect. Um, I, you know, I don't think it's unique to Drupal, but I think it's, um, it's something that I think that we should have more community awareness around and think about how we proactively manage it. And that is, um, it, so it's definitely not unique to Drupal, but Drupal empowers it in a way that maybe a lot of other <laughs> software frameworks don't, which is the idea that like, you know, uh, when you have Drupal as a hammer, everything looks like a nail. Um, and that's, that's not good. We should be thinking about uh, what our the organizations we're working for or our customers or the users that we're serving, what their needs are. And we should be okay with um, understanding when and where Drupal is the right fit. Um, and that's something that I think maybe, uh, I know I'm definitely guilty of in the past, uh, but as a community, because Drupal is so powerful and so extensible, um, it's something that uh, it, it, maybe we could get better at. And, and it's, it's really important for the life of the community. You know, every, if we misuse Drupal and we don't create um, tooling and, and websites and uh, projects that drive value for organizations, then the, the team that invested the money and their, their effort and their time and maybe sometimes mission critical aspects of what they're trying to do, they walk away and say like Drupal's a terrible technology. That's not, I don't like Drupal. I'm gonna try something else. And um, I think it's important that we don't set uh, organizations for like high risk projects when, when or where Drupal might not be the right fit. And or, uh, you know, maybe an extension of that is like Drupal will allow you to architect and over architect your way into a corner um, in a way that many other technologies don't. And it's really important that we as a community focus on our customers and our users needs and feel very comfortable pushing back and saying, I could do that. Drupal would allow us to do that, but that doesn't really solve your problem. And also we'd be creating a lot of code debt. And um, I don't think it's intentional, but I think there's a lot of money spent and maybe over-engineering some things in Drupal to get it exactly the way that a stakeholder wanted it versus something that will impact the users. And that uh, you know, can be uh, negatively impactful on the community and on the perception of Drupal, which is really important for us to consider. So. What do you think the biggest threat to Drupal is right now? Um, I think some of it is in the same vein of um, what I talked about earlier, which is, you know, the people that are working and driving decisions around Drupal, safeguarding the understanding that it's really important that, um, you know, all things being equal. And there, there's always um, some projects and teams that just don't understand the technology. Uh, that the, the sites that we're building, the projects that we're doing in Drupal are impactful and are thoughtful and we're not just building whatever we're being asked to build because the money's there. Um, because ultimately then we're measuring the value of Drupal and its ability to uh, serve the needs of um, the world, like the potential uh, uh, users of Drupal, like a project at a time. So that's a threat, I think. Um, and the second is good stewardship of the open source 
uh, ethos and uh, contributions to the community. Like we have uh, amazing, uh, you look at the history of Drupal from you know four to five to six, there are a number of names that stand out where we're really standing on the shoulders of giants that contributed so much time and code and effort into making Drupal better, like one version, one contrib module at a time. Um, but those people are not inexhaustible resources. So there has to be a pattern of, you know, educating new people into the community, helping them contribute, helping them understand why it's valuable, helping them understand why it's valuable in the context of their career, their customers, and making it really easy to participate. And I, I mean, I say this and say like, maybe it's something that even I haven't paid as much attention to, not even I, that sounds ridiculous, but it's definitely something I haven't paid as much attention to. It's really easy to drift away from which is why I'm super grateful that you invited me uh, to talk today. And, you know, organizations like Tag One are uh, carrying the banner, um, but it's important. Like if we stagnate as a community, um, then I think the project itself will, will falter. Definitely. It takes a lot of effort and energy to, to keep contributing. And it's okay for folks if it waxes and wanes, we, we have busy lives. You know, I think, like you said, we just need to remember the, the positive benefits that we get out of it, you know, do it because it benefits you, not, you know, altruistically necessarily, you know, there's a lot of value in it for you, you're going to grow, you're going to benefit, your organization is going to benefit. Um, and yeah, it's okay if it waxes and wanes, we're, we're all super busy. Um, you know, you, you talked about all of these amazing people in the community, you know, a, a community isn't a single person. Uh, and I'm sure that, you know, like you said, standing on the shoulder of giants, there are many people who helped and supported you over the years. Uh, but if you had to highlight one, you know, maybe two people that had a really big impact uh, on your success and growth, you know, in the community, you know, whether it's personal or professional, uh, who would you give a shout out to? Uh, it's hard to do that because there are so many people and I'll be leaving. Um leaving people out, but um, I guess I'll, I'll pick one and uh, because, I, I, well, there are many, many, many people and that could be its, its own podcast, but um, definitely one of the most impactful people for me is um, a colleague of mine from Media Current named Don Ali. And Don um, came on to the Media Current team uh, with agency experience and came on to be a senior project manager and joined Media Current around the time that most of the enterprise Drupal agencies in the space were uh, engineering teams first and foremost. You know, companies would come to us and say, we'd like to build a website. We've got some ideas. We would design an architect and build the website and hand back the code, maybe stay close with them to do maintenance. But it was very, very code focused, feature function focused. Um, and that was, I think, a lot of, in a lot of ways, that's where the industry was, especially in the Drupal um, uh, space. And Don relentlessly drove a customer first perspective that I think I had, you know, already had a, a seed of internally, but uh, it, it affected me in a way that has positively impacted my career since then and had a tremendous amount of impact on media current and its, and its high growth phase and really helped us um, to evolve and, and become a better agency for our customers. Not that we weren't thinking customer first, but it was really that um, maturation of the customer facing team to be able to feel very comfortable to say, well, hold up, why are we doing this? You know, why are we doing this request? How is this gonna impact you? Does this, does this align with the goals that you set as your organization? And when you have those conversations um, and you help teams, you help your customers realize their goals and, and you know, uh, kind of stop being an order taker, that's when you build long-term partnerships. Absolutely. And that's the only way to do it. And that, um, that affects everything from, uh, you know, your, for me, my own personal satisfaction, we want uh, not just successful projects, but like really, really happy customers that you build long-term relationships with. It helps media currents growth as an agency. Um, you get, to, when you're not going project to project and you're in long-term partnerships with customers with, uh, forecasted revenues and goals, then, you get to take more control over your agency. You get to uh, hire at the right pace. You get to say like, where else can we extend our capabilities? That not everything has to be um, based around like how many hours did we bill? Uh, or, you know, if only we can land this next big project, we can grow. Uh, so there's this tremendous impact on the customer and on the agency. And Don 
um, was relentless in helping us all focus on that, built out an amazing digital strategy team. And um, at the same time, uh, even though she wasn't co contributing code to the Drupal project, was making us all think through the lens of Drupal of how we're uh, better serving our customers' needs. So she was tremendously impactful. It's really important to remember that there's so much more than code that makes Drupal. Uh, mm -hmm. and there are ways for everybody to get involved and to contribute in ways that everybody can learn and benefit. Before we wrap up, um, I want to ask you to pass the torch. You know, you mentioned all these great people that have made, you know, contributions to Drupal. Uh, when you think of someone who's had a lot of influence, a lot of impact on the platform and the community over the years, what's one of the first names that comes to mind and why do you think I should reach out to them? So I'm, um, Dawn doesn't have a commit to her name, but I absolutely think that you should uh, reach out to Dawn. She um, actually works at Red Hat now and works with the Drupal team there, has you know, spent the same amount of time I think we have for thereabouts uh, directly focused on Drupal projects. And her lens and understanding of how to help teams and non-technical stakeholders realize the value of Drupal and an open source approach, and then just the broader application of how to think about creating success with a website. Um, and she's a, gr a great speaker, and, and uh, uh, I think she'd be valuable for your interview. So I, I would recommend Dawn. Awesome. Thank you. I will definitely reach out to her. Uh, James, really appreciate you joining me today. Uh, to all our viewers, we really appreciate you joining us as well. If you like this talk, please remember to upvote, subscribe, and share it out. You can check out all our interviews in this series at tag1.com slash 20. That's two zero. Uh, you can also check out our past Tag1 team talks and the latest technology topics at tag1.com slash talks. As always, we'd love your feedback and any topic suggestions. You can write to us at talks at tag1.com. That's tag the number one.com. Thanks again for tuning in. Take care, everybody. Thanks, Mike.